Yes, I was hesitating about giving this talk because it's a preliminary, uh, rather preliminary work in progress and also builds on some other work which hasn't been uh, yet written. But I hope to at least convey some, uh, some idea and s s some uh, sketch of the result, results. So let me write, the, first of all, the plan of the talk. So first I will recall the concept of the infrared infrared data and infrared algebra following the work of Gaiota, Moore, and Witten. So then uh, our uh, initial observation was the analogy between this type of data and elementary topological concept of perverse sheaves. So the analogy with perverse sheaves. So it's a, a, it's a topological concept, but uh, what appears here is some particular way of looking at perverse sheaves from the point of view of straight line geometry. So I say, uh, let's call it a topological versus straight line approach. So then the next uh, part would be the relation of straight line approach and Fourier transform for perverse sheaves and regular D models. This is, uh, of course, a very elementary uh, su subject, well known by now. Now, the fourth part would be the infrared algebra for a perverse shobber. So uh, perverse shobbers are categorical analogs of perverse sheaves, and I recall briefly uh, the main features, so how we think about them. So I write infrared algebra for a perverse shobber. Again, in the simplest situation, on the complex plane. Perverse Schober, just the analog of perverse sheaves. And uh, uh, finally, maybe a summary and a little speculation that Schobers correspond to theories in some sense. So theory is a physical concept. Physicists like to speak about theories, and it's very hard to pin down what exactly is meant by this. But uh, at least in some cases, what uh, uh, the uh, algebraic uh, structure seems to be such a perverse Schober. Schober equals theories, and maybe I say here about possible relation uh, with resurgence. So let me start by re recalling uh, part one, infrared data and infrared algebra. So this uh, refers to the paper of Gaiota Moore-Witten with the uh, infrared al algebra on the, in the, of the infrared in the title. So I'll try to uh, summarize how uh, physicists talk about such things. So they start with the concept of a theory, and of course, as I said, what it is is not quite clear. But in the infrared limit, that's a magical word, infrared limit, theory degenerates into the data of vacua of the theory. So, so, wow. Yes, yes, 
Yes. Yeah, but uh, vacuo, and I denote the set of vacuo by A, plus uh, tunneling, some kind of tunneling data between the vacuo. Tunneling. Tunneling between vacuo. Between vacuo. Well, plus uh, something else. So when in this approach, a theory means a two-dimensional theory with some particular type of supersymmetry, 2.2 supersymmetry, and also massive theory, inversible massive, which means that the set of vacua is discrete and we assume it to be finite. Which it implies. So, for any uh, element, for any vacuum, uh, vacuum I, so it is sort of assumed in this uh, theory that we can associate some category, triangulated category, which is called the local deep brain category. Local deep brain. It is triangulated or A infinity or something like this. So set of vacua. Okay. A. The set of A is set of vacua, right? but it was discrete. <coughs> so massive theory, typically you understand that. Yeah. Uh, so in the simplest case of non-degenerate vac vacuum, degenerate vacuum. It implies that phi i is the simplest possible triangulated category, is derived category of vector spaces, say over the field C. So th this is one type of data is at the vacuo, and the tunneling effect uh, uh, is encoded in functors mij from phi i to so phi j. That's called, uh, called transport functors. Or So an example of su such a theory is the Landau-Ginsburg theory corresponding to a uh, superpotential. So example, the Landau-Ginsburg theory associated to a superpotential called W from Y to C. So uh, let me call it a holomorphic, uh, a Lefschetz pencil or holomorphic Morse function. The Morse function. We also assume it's a proper map, so fibers are compact, so proper map. And Y is assumed, let's say, to be Keller and Calabiao. So there are different settings, so let, let's do this. So in this case, the vacuo correspond to the critical points of the, uh, of the Morse function, which are assumed to be non-degenerate. So vacuo critical points, we denote them y1, yn. So and the critical values we denote by wi, small wi, which is w of yi, it's a complex number, and we assume that they are distinct for different critical points, they are distinct. So in this situation, we uh, get an embedding called epsilon from the set A inside the complex plane. So in this situation, it's a non-degenerate vacuo, phi, phi, phi i equals d v vect. So m i j are uh, certain complexes uh, equals functor certain so vector spaces to say vij so certain complexes and these are given by uh, so, so let me write here vij sorry vij equals c to the uh, number right here number of gradient trajectories as in Maxim's talk on this conference. Yeah, trajectories. 
uh, let me say of what? Of a real part of zeta, I, I write first and then explain. W, so, so those points W, W, I, we, we draw them in a plane, W, I, W, J. So zeta, I, J is the slope, is a slope. So we, we, we sort of uh, orient it so that this goes along this direction. Uh, tra trajectory is joining uh, y i and y j. So and we assume also that the set A is in linearly general position. So assume linearly So that means no such things. Uh, excuse me, for a physicist, vacuum is a configuration with zero energy, right? Yes, yes, but so, so, but, but, but here I, I, I cannot uh, sort of you start dig I, I, I into the meaning of vacuum here. Of, of course, I, I blank. I'm, I'm just saying what physicists say. Uh, so, so some people say that a vacuum is a configuration. Some people say that a vacuum is a theory. And it's very, it's, it's very hard to pin down what different people mean. And I, I, I certainly won't be able to say this. But, but at least in this uh, situation, naively, so vacuo can correspond to critical points of the classical action that is kind of uh, natural to expect. Th th this, so this, uh, at least this type of statement, uh, does not uh, D d does not cause uh, immediate protest. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> so you're, uh, you're uh, thinking in a completely on space, it's only the action, it's, there is no Hamiltonian, there is no energy. So, so, so this is the potential. So, you know, so, so what does it even mean to say landau Ginzburg theory? It's a two-dimensional theory, which means it's a, some kind of sigma model with a potential. Yes, so, so it's a, and if you write it properly in this setting, there will be fermionic fields, which I all sort of sweep under the rug. So, yes, it, it, it is a, it's a very, it, everything here is a very complicated structure. Now, I, I want to say one more thing about this situation, which uh, is again s sort of me assuming the physicist language, but it's, it's a kind of interesting point that to define this set the embedding of vacuo into the complex numbers, it is not necessary to have a, a superpotential. It's not necessary to deal with this, with this type of theory. So that epsilon can be defined uh, abstractly. So not necessarily for landau Ginsburg. So in this setting, it means that in this case, there are central charges of the supersymmetry algebra. So Cij, are, so let, let's call them the central charge. Yeah. Can you comment uh, more on different categories? What should I take? Is, is there any other example rather than derived uh, vector space on over some? It would, well, if there is a degenerate critical point, it's what's called the local Foucault is idle category. So in, in general, it's related to such things, related to mirror symmetry in this type of setting. So what I want to say is that there is some sort of uh, physical folklore when people speak about theories, and it's very, it is very hard to, to understand what they mean. But I, I'm t just trying to reproduce what I could, uh, what, uh, what we could gather. So first of all, there is a ch central charge of Susie algebra in the in the ij sector, so to say, in the ij sector. So there are some generators, and uh, the, the relations would hold uh, up, up to this, this constant. And they satisfy the property that cij plus cjk equals cik. This implies this exists, and it says uniquely wi, uh, uniquely mod modular shift. Wi such that uh, such that Cij equals Wi minus Wj. 
so, so those things have intrinsic property which is not tied to the particular model. So what's, what's interesting in, the, in this approach that what it, it, uh, we really take care about the linear structure in this plane. So this is the plane of central charges, if you want. So important, so linear, linear uh, or even convex structure. So they're co-boundary, actually. Yes. So CIGs are co-boundary. Yes, yes, yes. So, so it is a cycle, it is co-boundary, yes. If you have numbers like this, then there are numbers like this. So in principle, this can, can correspond to some uh, different structures like Jacobi identity. Well, that, that I don't know. Again, I don't want to say too much. It's, 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 uh, the reason, yes, yes. Ah, you see what I mean? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so, so, so just to finish this, I also want to say that then people consider moving, acro moving uh, across, across the situations like this in the space of theories, in the space of theories, give some types of wall crossing formulas. So this was the, uh, as much as I could master of the uh, physical summary. Now let me recall the infra infrared algebra as defined by Gaiota Murvitton plus our interpretation in the work with uh, Maxim and Jan. Plus interpretation. interpretation by So in this situation, out of the data, one can construct, first of all, a Lie infinity algebra, G. And it has to do with some type of convex geometry of this set. So it is written as follows, as direct sum, as a vector space, which also has a grading, and some would be over convex uh, polygons. A polygon go like this. We, we take some of the critical points, some of these elements of the set A, we, we, we take a sequence of them which go around in circle and form a convex thing. Wi0, Wi1, Wip be such a polygon and inside there will be some re re residual part of the set A, whatever it fits there. And we write here like this, of natural transformations from the identity to the composition. Composition of M. There was functors M. So in the simplest case when it's uh, tensor pro product is Vij, it will be simply the uh, VI0, I1, tensor V, I1, I2, tensor V, IP, I0. It's a vector space with a grading, which I'm not explaining, and the bracket here, so Lie infinity bracket, let me do it here. There are different types of brackets, Lie infinity bracket, brackets, they uh, uh, using the, the concept known as secondary polytop, sigma of A. So convex polygon, say Q prime, but this polygon, or, or, or let, let me write just Q. So such subpolygons Q, sigma of A intersected with Q. It's a secondary polytop. Which was in introduced by Gelfand, with work in Gelfand and Zelivinsky. I don't know, not four maybe. Yeah. So it's a, it's a polytop whose vertices correspond to triangulations of this polytop with new vertices into triangles whose vertices are inside this set. Triangulations of Q with, again, vertices in 
A intersected with Q. But not all triangulations, and here the convex geometry is important, but triangulations which are called regular, which can be realized by convex functions. Regular. So edges would correspond to, to almost triangulations. When we have everything is a simplex, but one thing can be triangulated twice. And so on. So faces correspond to correspond to again regular polygonal decomposition. Polygonal or, or decompositions or tilings, let me call this tilings. But in particular, for this particular purpose, we are interested in faces of codimension one. So codimension one faces. So they give the brackets. So for instance, the composition like this gives the binary bracket. The composition like this gives a ternary bracket. So we, saw that we can triangulate this twice. Let me do it like this. We can triangulate it like this, and we can triangulate it like this, and so on. There can be more, and in general, this is a, this is a complicated concept because to know uh, which functions are convex, it's not enough to know which point lies on right on left side of, an, of which line. It's a, it's a subtle question. So this is the so-called uh, Lie infinity algebra. And further, if you have a point on the circle of directions, so S1, so directions, we can, there are, well, we can associate an associative algebra or homotopy associative algebra R zeta. I write A infinity algebra. It's uh, done similarly, except those uh, polygons are not closed. We go in the direction zeta, and we take all possible chains like this. Wi0, Wi1, Wip. And this is direction zeta. So again, this direct sum, okay, natural transformation from uh, from the composition to phi uh, to m i0 ip. And there is a similar uh, multiplication in this algebra. What we have constructed, what we have proved in that paper, that there is a homomor quasi isomorphism from this Lie algebra to the deformation complex, deformation complex of R zeta. Uh, so in particular, an element, a maro cartan element, gamma, maro cartan element, gives a deformation, r zeta of gamma, a new algebra with perturbed multiplication. So the conjecture of Gayota Murvitton, who, who have constructed this in their language, which I didn't prove that it is a quasi-isomorphism, conjecture that uh, a theory, whatever it means, gives such a gamma, gamma and, and R zeta of gamma is the category of D brains associated to, to the uh, half plane. Category of D brains in H zeta. So H zeta will be this type of half plane. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, what is the gradient in this direct sum? So, so, so the, the, it corresponds from this. So everything here is graded. So, so there is a additional graded grading by the length. And, and when I say th those things, that everything is grading here. So, so it, it works in such a way that if uh, so, so th th those vij, we call them the coefficients, coefficients data. So it, one can assume that vij are, that vij are just one dimensional spaces in degree zero, then they will be grading simply by the number of, by the number of those. Well, 
Okay, so now let me uh, discuss anal uh, analogy of this with the elementary topological problem of perverse sheaves, of, of classification of perverse sheaves. So suppose X is a Riemann surface, or maybe just an oriented surface in topological sense. And inside, we have a finite set A, which I denote W1, WN. Maybe with boundary, with boundary, maybe with corners, so and the interior points. Then in this case, we, we, we have the concept of perverse sheaves on X with possible singularities in A. And uh, I just write the category perv X A. I first write like this, perverse sheaves with singularities inside A. So outside A, such a sheaf is a local system. So inside here, we have the category Ls of x, local system. <coughs> so a perverse shift corresponds uh, in one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence with holonomic regular D models, or simply with differential equations in the most naive sense. Holonomic regular D model. For example, if I have a differential operator, C, C of x dx, then I have sheaf O C, to perverse sheaves are certain complexes, then this, this is an example of a perverse sheaf. It's a complex of degree two, of, of length two, has first cohomology, which is solution, zero cohomology with a sheaf of solutions, and first cohomology, which sort of the obstructions to no, in, in homogeneous equations. That's a classical by now concept. And the simplest situation when one can classify such objects is the category of perverse sheaves on a unit disk with one singularity at zero. So we have our surface is this, and the set A consists of one point. So in this case, it is, it is known that's equivalent to the category of diagrams consisting of two vector spaces, phi and psi, and two maps, A and B, such that uh, identity psi minus AB and identity uh, phi minus BA are invertible. It's called T psi. This is T phi invertible. In fact, invertibility of one implies invertibility of the other. So the meaning of this, that psi is called the space of nearby cycles, is sort of the section of this local system at some point. I'll put it here. So it's nearby cycles. And this is called the space of vanishing cycles. So it sort of lives here. Uh, so because of the monodromy, they are really local systems on the circle. So phi, I write underlined, is a local system on S1, zero, circle of directions at zero, because it, it, it depends on the choice of, on the choice of cut. So in, in particular, if now f is a perverse shift on a surface, 
perf of x a. So we have a surface, maybe something like this. The, we have some point a, and we have a path contain, uh, joining wi and wj. Suppose we have a path gamma. Then, uh, first of all, we have phi i underlined is the local system of the, of the vanishing cycle on this circle of direction. Local system on S1 wi. Circle of the direction. So, and if we have a gamma like this, then we have a map. We have a map from this phi to this phi. We have, so gamma, as I explained, so it's joined the two points and doesn't meet, meet any other points. Then we have a map of phi i gamma. This means the stock of local system at this particular direction. So I have a small circle here and a small circle here. I have the, the, the stock of phi here. Then by the map in this notation, by the map A, I got to psi. Well, at any point, maybe at this point, P would be psi P. Psi P. And then by a map B, I go to phi j gamma, to, slow, uh, to the stock of phi at this point. So in this composition, let me call it m i j of gamma. We can do it for any path. But when we move the path cross, across some other point, this map changes. It's, it's topological, so unless we hit something, it, it's going to be the same. Modular the identification of the stocks given by the local system. So when we move across a point, we have the so-called abstract picard lefschetz formula. Which is a version of the wall crossing formula in this elementary context, in this baby context, if you want. Suppose you have three points, wi, sorry. Wj and Wk. Suppose I have a such path. This is path alpha. This is path beta, and this is path gamma, which is nearby. And we want to move it across this point. It would be some here path called gamma prime. So we can identify all the all the all the space of vanishing cycles here, here, and here, and also here, here, and here. And the formula would be like this: that m i k. <coughs> of gamma prime equals m i k of gamma plus the composition m j k of alpha m i j of beta. This formula is simply a direct consequence of the fact that the monodromy is given by such uh, identities, the identity of three terms. And if we work it out here, those three terms will translate to this. So this is a kind of wall crossing. So it works on the vanishing cycles or nearly it acts on No, it is. So Mij is a map from vanishing cycles to vanishing cycles. So the usual picard lefschetz formula would correspond, let me be a little brief here, the so usual picard lefschetz it corresponds for w from y. We can consider a lefschetz pencil with values in the Riemann surface as before, so lefschetz pencil. Lefschetz pencil. So A, critical, critical values. So in this case, we have a perverse sheaf, perverse sheaf L, which is obtained like this. We take the direct image of the constant sheaf of Cy. And then the, the, the perverse sheaves form the heart of its structure. So one can uh, extract out of this the middle, 
middle perverse chromology shift. What is a bounded category? Of, of, of constructible complexes. Yes. So, uh, so and for this, phi i, phi uh, i of L are one, uh, one dimensional and generated by the classical vanishing cycle, which in Picard Lefschetz theory. By this delta i. So the, the classical Picard Lefschetz theory uh, uh, is obtained by applying this to some particular perverse shift. Now, uh, let me just say one more thing that all those, those maps, the phi i and the mij, they don't, would be trivial for a constant shift. So we can consider the quotient category per bar of xa equals perf of xa modular constant sheaves, or modular local systems. And phi i, phi i descent, ls of s1 wi, mij descent. So, and, and there is a, a classical description. So, uh, what I want to compare, I want co to compare this data of tr transition func functors in a theory with the classical description of this uh, category of perverse sheaves given by uh, Gelfand, McPherson, and Delano. The description of this category perf overlined of say a disk, but with a set A inside the disk. So we have some disk and we have some cells there. So this description uh, goes like this. So what is the notation means? It's, it's, it's a quotient category. It means that we consider new uh, objects of this category are supposed to be, become zero. In particular, in this new category, every morphism which factors through a local system becomes zero. So this thing descends because vanishing cycles that they're trivial for a local system. Is that independent of the genus of the Riemann surface? What? The, that quotient category. Well, we, we, we define it. No, no, no. It, 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 of course, it depends on everything. No, but I mean, after the fact, it's not. Uh, uh, I think it still depends. Uh, yes, yes, I think it depends. In fact, one can d describe it along the line that I'm going to say, but I, I just d didn't want to mention this. So, so first of all, we have local systems as before. This is those uh, little local systems, phi i, on the circles of directions. So when we do the following thing, uh, we introduce one more point here, v, and make a system of cuts like this, system of paths. S such that they don't intersect. So they intersect only here. So, so then, and we defined uh, m i j from phi i to phi j is via uh, w i, then along, to the, uh, along this path to the point v, and then back to w j. So we call it the Vladivostok description, because this we drag everything somewhere far away. So, so. So we go so drag everything to Vladivostok and then back. So in the theorem of Gelfman, McPherson, and Villonen is that per bar of CA is identified to the category formed by datas phi i, which can be arbitrary, and mij uh, from phi i to phi j. So that's from the corresponding stocks corresponding to those paths, which can be arbitrary.
So this is already uh, quite close to what I had in the beginning, except we, we, we drag everything to uh, the far away point. But now it is not hard to modify this, this statement to, to prove a version of this, which is not identical, but it, it's similar, so small modification. So modification. It's not, uh, not ident identical, however. So I assume A, A in linearly general position, in linear general position, and use straight lines. So here we can use any paths. Uh, but suppose we don't want to go to Vladivostok. We just do join them by straight lines, use straight lines straight intervals, wi, wj, then same, same statement. So uh, somehow the th thesis, I or m maybe say one more word, so when we deform, so from this point of view, we have a perverse sheaf, but we care very much care about what happens when we join them by straight lines. Of course, the cause of the perverse shift is topological. So if you move the points a little, we get an isomonodromic deformation. But then if you do this, then this description will change along. So if we isomonodromically deform, isomonodromically, For this description, this, n n not this, but this description, this description, changes along, so when we cross this situation, suppose we, suppose we move those points, wj, wk, suppose we start here and then move here then would change exactly by that formula. And, and these are called walls of marginal stability in the physical literature, walls of marginal stability. So somehow the thesis is that the infrared da data or infrared algebra is categorified version of perverse sheaves plus insistence on straight line approach. So let me write this thesis. I R algebra equals categorified perverse sheaf plus straight line approach. <coughs> but now from the uh, from the naive point of view. If we have the topological concept of perverse sheaf, uh, of perverse sheaf, then one may wonder what's the reason for, uh, for fixating on the straight line approach? What, uh, what do, do we want to do when this becomes important? Well, and the answer, or at least uh, the only answer we could come up with, is that it becomes important uh, only when we want to make a Fourier transform. So my part three would be straight line approach and Fourier transform. So what do I mean here? I mean that, that we start on the complex line, we start with a perverse sheaf. 
curve of CA. It's a topological concept, but we can associate it by Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. So holonomic regular, regular D model. So D model simply by polynomial one on C of, uh, of W and DW called M. Then from this we do the Fourier transform. We simply reply so it would be model M check when we say uh, W is D with respect to Z, DW equals minus Z. So it will be holonomic but irregular. Irregular. And uh, it's, uh, it, it, it has its own uh, perverse complex of solutions, perverse shift of solutions. So it, it is known since the book of Malgrange in 1991 exactly what happens. So known, known since Malgrange. I, I say, it, uh, say it briefly. So now, first of all, that if we consider just this thing, it is, has only possible singularity at zero. So this may have many singularities, but the Fourier transformed model will have only possible singularity at zero. At zero, and of course, at infinity. So here it would be regular, here it would be irregular. So the second is the generic rank, rank of F check equals sum of the dimensions of the phi i. And third part is that the Stokes matrices, so this irregular D model, so near infinity it has the Stokes phenomena, and this is basically a version of theory of exponential integrals, which uh, Maxim uh, discussed in his talk. So again, it's known that Stokes matrices at infinity, so, so this can have many meanings. So, but anyway, they are expressed, they are all expressed via straight line, st straight line uh, Mij. So in this situation, we only we obtain immediately straight lines if we care about the Fourier transform. So I won't go in, into more details. There are different ways of looking at this. Uh, at least it explains uh, what we want to do. So we are dealing then with some categorification of exponential integrals. So when we do Fourier transform of such a perverse shift, if the, Fourier, if the perverse shift is uh, if f equals the Lefschetz perverse shift corresponding to w, this would be exponential integral for w. This is a version of this. Don't worry. Yes. So now l l let me discuss what I really uh, need to talk about is the categorical analog of perverse sheaves. This is phi i from the bar perverse sheaves. What, what, what? This phi i, so. So m i j from phi i to phi j. So, so basically we can identify the stock of this as the direct sum of phi i, and the stock's matrices would be expressed through something like this. Elementary Stokes matrix corresponding to elementary Stokes ray will be in the space of phi i, something like this. This is all in the book of Malgrange and in the paper of uh, Katsarkov, Kansevich, Pantsev on uh, Hodge, Hodge aspects of mirror symmetry. So now I'll do almost the final part will be infrared. For. 
So basically here uh, our point is that one can do all this, uh, uh, all this theory given, given a perverse, a categorified perverse sheaf. So perverse Schober is the cat categorified categorical analog of a perverse sheaf. was introduced by the work, joint work with Vadim Schachtman. So in the simplest case for a disk, for disk and zero, it's a version of the description with phi and psi, except phi and psi now are categories, and A and B are functors. So it's a categorist. So a DG or triangulated. So and the functor B is adjoined to A on one side. So if it's adjoined, then there is a map. The unit and the co-unit of that junction, identity phi, goes to uh, IA compo composite with A, and A composite with A star goes to identity psi. And the condition is that the cone, sh cone of those maps should be equivalence of categories. And such a data is known under the name of spherical functors. Cones, cones would be analog of difference equivalence. So this concept is known as a spherical functor. So uh, uh, it is just one example. and. As I said in the introduction, uh, in, in the beginning, so what I'm saying now builds on another work which is not yet fully written. It's a work by, with Dickerhoff. Summerman, with exact invariant definition. So invariant definition of uh, the concept of a Schober on a, a Riemann surface, the singularity on, uh, at a point A. Invariant definition of, let me write, Schob, Schob of XA. So since objects of this thing are certain categorical data, so this itself should be an infinity category. Invariant definition of this. And of the analog of the cohomology, which, is no, which we call the Foucault, topological Foucault category of X with the coefficient in Schober, topological Foucault. And in, in, in particular, the Foucault is idle category is, uh, is obtained in this construction. So it, this, this gives in particular The Foucault is idle category. Category associated to a, a superpotential. Associated to. Why is topological? Uh, because there is, so, so, so in appropriate situation, there should be, X should have a hole. And in this case, there should not, uh, no moduli for, for symplectic structure. It's topological because it doesn't mention symplectic structure. So th this uh, for a particular shober, sh for, for, for a particular shober, for a particular particular shober. So if, for, for such a shober S, for sh such a shober S, we have as for, for perverse shears phi i a local system of triangulated category. of triangulated categories. We have Mij of gamma from phi i to phi j will be transport functors. And picard lefschetz identity correspond, becomes a triangle. We have picard lefschetz triangle rather than identity. So it would be uh, M in the same situation, Mik of gamma goes to M 
ik of gamma prime, and there's here's m j k of alpha, m i j of beta. So again, this is a manifestation of this uh, situation that the monodromy corresponding equivalences is given by the cone. So, so what we can do, we can marry this with the infrared algebra. So the data which we, which we get are very now not just similar, but almost identical to what happens in the infrared algebra. So uh, for Schober S, we can associate the A infinity algebra G and A infinity algebra R zeta using M i j corresponding to the straight uh, straight interval W i W j. So and theorem is maybe I'll write it here. So this uh, Picard-Lefsch triangle has information. It has some maps. It's not just an identity; it's a, it's a piece of data. Theory one of the A. The system of Picard-Lefsch triangles uh, gives a Maurer-Cartan element eta in G one. B that the deformation of R zeta uh, along eta, eta gives, so a same algebra uh, as the category of models, gives the Foucault category of the disk, and uh, let me write disk with one corner. So in here everything is. When I say surface, is possibly surface with corners, and data of corners is additional structure of cho cho chosen points on the boundary of the surface. So it gives this type of Foucault category. So now this, uh, uh, this uh, suppose we have a Schrober with some points here, we have this type of situation. So this all descends to the version of uh, factorized category, I just write Schaub, Schaub with overline of CA, which means quotient by uh, constant ones. And theorem two is, theorem two, data of phi i, this local system, straight Mij, Mij and gamma in G1, Mara Cartan, are equivalent data of S in perf CA. So somehow what we do, we do here, we uh, categorify the Fourier transform of perverse Schrobers. Im implicitly, so this picture of a disk with one corner is in fact this picture which appears in all uh, texts on the Fourier transform of perverse sheaves. We consider cohomology with, uh, in a hyperplane, in a complex plane, uh, the support in some uh, half plane far enough in some particular direction. So this corresponds to Foucault's Zeidel. And this corresponds to Fourier transform. So in our case, it's a version of Fourier transform for Schobers. So now I'm almost uh, done. Let me just say a few words as some summary. Let me just 
just a few words summarizing what we, how we think about it. So, summary would be that we want to say that Schobers are almost the same as theories. But which theories? Well, we say 2D and 2, two supersymmetry and, 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 and so on. The set of A is a set of vacua, which embedded into C, is, sorry, into C, corresponds to S in Schob. And so for us, it seems that we need to consider, it's more natural to consider this part. Uh, but now the question is, what about other theories? This is a very restricted type. And here we, of course, are in, on a even more shaky ground, since uh, the meaning of theories somehow changes as we go to other situations. But for instance, in the case of 4D theories, the set of vacua is no longer a finite set. It's a non-discrete manifold non-discrete. Uh, non for instance, some Coulomb branch is the modular space of the vacuum. And in many cases, it's holomorphic symplectic. No supersymmetry? With, with, I think everything with supersymmetry or hypercalor. Yeah. Like, uh, yes, 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 yes. So, so, so in s s such cases, set A is no longer a finite set, but there is still some way of thinking, of relating this to a picture like this. And it's, of course, even more speculative. So I, I recall, or just briefly mentioned, the work of Gajota Murnitsky. So it has some, uh, some Darbu charts on the symplectic manifolds. But it also goes back to the work of Kansevich and Sobelman on K3 surface. K3 surface over in the non-Archimedean limit. So what's important here, and that actually matches, a little, matches with Jan Sobelman's talk earlier, that we have changes of charts in this approach. Changes of coordinates are some nonlinear Stokes transformations. So, uh, but what does it mean that we have a nonlinear transformation? It means that we have an action by a linear way on the space of functions. So let me just sort of speak a little lo uh, loosely here, even more loosely than I was up to now. So this corresponds, so, so it means that we have Stokes matrices would be of infinite rank, infinite rank, and would be ring automorphisms, ring of functions. Well, this s s sort of means appro approximately that we have irregular, irregular demodel on C, again, infinite rank, right, with an algebra structure. And again, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a, a rather loose, loose chain of reformulation. By the Fourier transform, we may think that we have a regular D model on C with convolution, convolution algebra structure. a demodel or a perverse sheaf, which means that we have a map, something like this, convolution multiplication, f star f to f. 
So this already uh, sounds not so far removed from the philosophy of resurgent functions, when we consider algebras of multivalued functions closed under convolution. So one can fantasize a little, so saying that this leads to some sort of resurgent, We're trying to axiomatize it, maybe we can speak about some resurgent perverse sheaves and more generally Schobers, as we discussed. So this would correspond to the case when the set A is not finite. A not finite, but a subgroup or a sub-semigroup in C. So it should be closer under addition. So the difference between one type and another type would be that in this case we have a fi finitistic picture, finite set of singularities, and here we have a more uh, complicated picture where singularities form uh, an additive structure, and the shift, perverse shift itself has a convolution algebra structure. And this is again uh, rather similar to what Jan Soebelman was uh, speaking in his talk. So I'll probably stop here, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Maybe you have time for a question or two? I just want to sorry, go ahead. Um, so, uh, is this uh, regarding this, what you can tell regarding two dimensional series, yeah. uh, supersymmetric 2,2, and uh, in terms of the Fukaya categories, is this well established procedure? Suppose I take some supersymmetric gauge theory, and uh, can I uh, find that? You mean, what does the what does this you mean, the deform Fukaya category correspond you, to? You mean two-dimensional or four-dimensional? No, two so two if you have, a, well, there is a, what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is that physicists believe that in such situation we should have some kind of category of D-brains. Yes. H how exactly they believe? We, 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 at least I don't know. That's my point. There is no well-defined procedure. How it yes, but but s s sometimes physicists talk like this, as if there is. But of course. I, I, I am the, will be the first to agree that the, I, I certainly don't know a well-defined procedure. But what we can do, we have a, a, a topological structure which does have such well-defined procedure, which, which incorporates it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that was our goal of our work. So there's probably some deformation of a given... Uh... There will be a deformation, deformation problem here, yes, yes. There will be some sort of uh, initial theory, in, initial primitive algebra, sort of very simple, and then there is a deformation by the maurer cartan element. Yes. Uh, so maybe I have a good question, which is, oh, in this last thing, which I think is now erased, where you say you get the Foucault yes. category of the disk, do you mean the Foucault, the symplectic in that case? The deformed group. No, 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 no. So the deformed, de 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 again, the, there are again two, two uh, meanings of the word deformed. So here I mean deformed, uh, it, it, it still gives the topological Foucault category. Right, so yes, 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 yes. Okay. So there is an, another situation when we start from an open Riemann surface with a boundary and put element, uh, so, so the symplectic areas of the polygons give you uh, another. It, I am not talking about this.